Hi everybody, welcome to the Matt Western 365 YouTube channel. Today we're going to go a little bit old school and we're going to talk about how we can use XML in Power Automate by exploring the XPath expression. So it's not very often that we now talk about using XML in modern development, whether that's citizen development or pro code. Uh, the majority of web services now return JSON instead, and that's gen uh, generally the way that we interact with data. However, there are still some web services that will return XML. Perfect example, there are some legacy parts of SharePoint that still return XML. And so we still need to be able to interact with it. We don't want to isolate it completely. We don't want to ignore it because there are still some really good things that we can do with it. So what we're going to explore are the possibilities of what we can do in Power Automate by using the XPath expression. And what I'm going to share with you is just a few examples of how you can start to interact with a string of XML uh, to extract things like the attributes and also the node values themselves. So let's jump into Power Automate. Let's go and have a look. So here I've just got some very basic XML. Uh, all I've got are some cars. Uh, I, I, in my cars, I've got an attribute of manufacturer. And then I've got individual cars in each of my nodes. So uh, these are all cars that I've owned in the past. Uh, something very simple, just to really give us a way of being able to illustrate what we can do with XML. So I'm going to grab all that for a moment and let's go across to Power Automate. So in my flow, uh, I'm going to trigger this manually and I'm just going to have an input of XML. Um, so I'm going to pass in a string and we're going to look at how we can convert that to XML so it becomes recognized and then how we can interrogate it using XPath. So what I'm going to do is in my first compose step, all I'm going to do is take the input from my trigger so the string that I'm going to give it, and I'm just going to convert it to XML. The reason for doing this is just to show how we can take a string from a from dynamic content from somewhere else, just like consuming it from a different service. So I'm going to just go and put a very basic expression in here. I'm going to say this, uh, just declare it as XML, and let's just go and find the X, the input XML from my trigger. Perfect. So XML trigger. And let's just go and test this. So if I paste my XML into the input XML field, let's go and run that. Excellent. So you can see there that it's recognized it as XML because it's now coloring the different parts of this into different ways. So let's go now have a look at how we can break apart that XML and make it actually usable for something that we might want to, to do with it. So if I then go and add another step, and I'm just going to add another compose. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to just get the first car that comes out of my XML. So what I'm going to be looking for is how to isolate just that value there. So I'm just going to take the very first one. So let's just go and rename this. So I'm going to call this first node. So this time in my inputs, again, I'm going to add an expression. But this time, rather than um, going straight for XML, um, in fact, I'm going to use this again. So I'm just going to copy that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start typing XPath. So XPath is an expression that will allow me to target specific parts or groups of, uh, groups of nodes within my XML. So this is ways that I can go and uh, identify specific pieces. So let's go for XPath. Uh, I'm going to paste in my uh, trigger body. So I'm just telling it that it needs to be XML. If I don't specify it as XML, then what I will do is it will error saying that it's not the right format. And what I need to do then is provide it with an identifier, a way or a method of navigating through the XML to find what I'm looking for. 
And for me to get the first uh, the first node or the first value, all I need to do is, do is give it two forward slashes and tell it what, the, uh, what node I actually want it to bring the, the value back for. However, if I want to just get the value out in Power Automate, what I need to do is declare it as a string. So notice that the string actually sits within the, the single quotes. And the reason for that is because this isn't string as in the expression for Power Automate string, it's string as in XPath syntax. So it's telling me that I just telling the XPath I just want to bring back the value. So let's go and run that and we can see that. Let's grab my XML again. Let's run it. Okay, and this time you can see that the composer first node has come back and it's brought back the word sunny, which is the first one in that node structure. So we're off to a good start. But what happens if I decide actually I want to get the attribute instead? So this is where I now need to start targeting a, uh, a specific attribute. And the way that I do that is by using the at symbol. So let's go and put that into practice. So if I go and add a new step again, let's go and add another compose. And I'm going to call this compose manufacturer. Uh, once again, I'm going to be going back to my, let's go and grab that XML again, oh, that expression again. So I'm going to be going back to my expression builder. And once again, we're going to go XPath. I'm going to give it the XML that we're going to target. Uh, my XPath syntax needs to go in single quotes. And once again, I'm going to tell it that I want a specific value back. I want a string. And now my attribute that I'm looking for sits as part of the, uh, part of the car node. So I'm going to give it the two forward slashes. And I'm going to say, go and get me the car. But this time, if I want to go a little bit deeper than that, I need to give it another forward slash. So we're actually almost treat this like a path. Um, I'm going to go car. And then I'm going to use the at symbol and tell it which attribute I want it to bring back. So in this case, it's going to bring it back as manufacturer. So let's save that. And let's just go and rerun that last one and see what happens. So again, my flow runs. My first node, Sunny. My manufacturer, Nissan. So I can really use this to, uh, to target specific parts of the XML, uh, XML path to bring back what I want. So, so far we've seen the ability to bring back one, no uh, one node or one value and also one attribute from that node. But what happens if I want to bring back all of them and I want to start working with all of those nodes? Because all we've done so far is target one piece. So let's go back and do this again. So let's go and add another step and I'm going to add another compose. And this time let's call this uh, all cars. And once again, I'm going to go and switch to my expression builder. I'm going to build up an XPath expression, but this time, rather than identifying just an individual one, we're going to uh, bring back all of them. So let's go and type in XPath. Okay, and so this time my XPath, let's give it my trigger body text again, so that it's going to bring my XML in. And this time, rather than putting a string in here because I don't want to bring back an individual value. I want to bring back all of them and I can bring all of them back as an array, which means I can then loop through them. So I don't want a string. I want two forward slashes. So I'm just, I'm just telling it to bring back the node. Don't bring anything else back. And let's go and type car. So it's going to bring back all cars this time. Once I've got that, that gives me an array. So I can then go and add a loop into here to say that we're going to loop through each one of these cars and then we can do something with it. So for my apply to each, 
I'm just gonna go and put some dynamic content into there. And that's just gonna be the outputs from my cars or from all cars. Let's go and add another compose into here now. And if I add compose, then what I can do into here now is, actually, let's just quickly rename this to this car. So we can see exactly what's gonna happen here. So back into my expression builder, back to XPath again. However, this time, I'm not gonna take the output from my trigger. I'm gonna take the output from the, uh, from the loop itself because that's really easy to, for me to do. So again, I still need to declare it as XML, but this time I'm gonna tell it that the XML is just the item that gets brought back. So each, each time it loops round, it, item is gonna be different. So item, item is basically this iteration of the loop. What do I need to do then? I need to give it an X path. So in my X path, let's go and give it a string because I want it to bring back the values. But this time, because I want it to bring back just the value of this node, then all I need to do is give it a dot. Uh, now, XPath is one of those languages, if you want to call it a language, it takes a little bit of getting used to. And I'll post a um, some really good resources into the video notes where you can go and find out more about XPath. Because once you really get into understanding it, um, then it's actually quite powerful in terms of the way that you can uh, you can slice and dice XML. But I've got my, uh, my XPath there. So let's just go and test that. So if I look at my all cars, you can see here, it's actually given me an output of an array of XML nodes, but it's it comes back as a byte array. So, it, um, so it's not quite as simple to read as if we were to, uh, to use JSON in a similar way. But if I come into my apply to each, I can see I've got three uh, I've got three loops because it's it's looped through three different nodes. If I look at my compose, then my compose has come out as sunny, as no as a nova, and superb. So that's how we can use XPath in terms of our flows in Power Automate. Yes, XML isn't used as much. It's still there though, and it's still useful every now and then because I guarantee that when you start to use XML, uh, XML then this XPath functionality comes in really, really handy. Go and check out the link that I've posted into the into the notes. Um, that will give you some ideas about how you can slice and dice the XML. But more so, what we're gonna be using this for is when we go back to our working with dates uh, videos, then we'll be looking at this because we're going to get XML from SharePoint and we're going to start to slice and dice it so we can figure out recurrence. If you've got any questions, please do feel free to ask. Feel free to reach out on Twitter, LinkedIn or um, on Facebook. All of my details will be in the in the notes below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I, I am going to be posting more and more videos uh, on Power Automate and also some of the uh, other technologies within Microsoft 365. So that's it for now. I hope that was useful. Take care of yourselves and we'll speak again soon.